Here we have two pieces of fabric. They're 100% cotton that I dyed using rusted pieces of metal. Uh, in order to do this project, you need fibers that are completely natural, 100% cotton, wool, silk, or linen. They cannot be any kind of blends, just got to be 100%. Uh, they need to be free from any colors, dyes, stains, and sizing. So if you're buying new fabric uh, or you're using, say, a clothing item, you're going to want to make sure that if it's brand new that you've washed it first to make sure that it's free from any treatment, sizing treatment, or any other kind of treatment that the factory has done to it before they put it out there for people to buy. Today we are dyeing fabric using pieces of rusted metal. These are tools and tidbits that had been discarded and uh, had rust on them anyway, and I went ahead and rusted them a little further. Uh, in order to do that, you can create a rust soup from hydrogen peroxide, water, vinegar, and salt. It's extremely caustic. You don't want to handle it unless you have gloves on. Uh, you don't even want to handle the metals unless you have gloves on that you have soaked them in. If you look in the description box uh, here on the YouTube video, you'll see the link uh, which gives you another video on how to create your own bucket of rust water. As I use it, uh, it goes down. There's, a less, there's less concentration of rust to the mixture and so I will periodically add new rusty pieces of metal and allow them to rust further um, not only giving me additional interesting pieces to die with but also uh, building the content back up of that uh, caustic soup that I need in order to get the patterns and colors that I'm going to demonstrate for you on some fabric now. I'm going to start with my 100% natural fiber uh, piece of fabric that can be cotton, wool, linen, uh, silk, I like cotton. It grabs the color and really holds it. Uh, it's easy to come by. This is a scrap piece from an old pillowcase that I don't need anymore. It kind of gotten a little funky and I just thought I would repurpose it. So the first thing we're going to do to help speed along the process of creating the patterns on the fabric with the metal is to actually dip the fabric into my uh, bucket of rust soup and pre-soak it. Be certain to wear gloves through as much of this process as possible, if nothing else, uh, while you're handling the rusty bits of metal <clears throat> and dealing with the caustic um, liquid because uh, you can either end up with tetanus if you haven't had a tetanus shot, or with the liquid you can actually burn your hands and even just a little bit of it getting into cuts is extremely painful. So I've got my fabric soaking in here just for a moment. Uh, then I'm going to wring it out while I have my gloves on and then spread it out and arrange the metals. Okay, so while wearing my gloves, I removed the fabric, wrung out the excess over the bucket, and I've spread my fabric out on the deck as you can see. I also stress you might want to wear glasses while you do this project. Uh, to get this in your eyes I think would be horrific um, and I don't know what would happen. So um, I actually have a pair of glasses on now. So I'm going to arrange my pieces of metal on the fabric for you and as you can see the the caustic soup has already kind of tinted my fabric and when I add the metals and wrap them up in it that's going to further make marks. I'm going to dye with the rust using a few different steps. Uh, I'd like my background graphic to be this chicken wire that I've got and if you've got leather gloves, construction gloves, you know they're the thicker gloves, um, even planting gloves, they're you know, much more um, safe than just regular rubber gloves, which the metal can cut right through and cut you. So um, use those gloves, but I've gone ahead and laid this on my fabric. I'm gonna roll it up, and then I'm gonna actually steam it, and that's gonna help set the pattern into my fabric. Okay, so I've rolled my fabric up around the chicken wire, and then I've actually secured it on the outside with some more rusted wire that I had. You don't have to do that, but I did. Um, and so we're going to take it inside and put it in a strainer over a boiling pot of water and cover it tightly for about a half hour. I am boiling a pot of water, it's really only about half full, and with a strainer, once that gets boiling, I'm going to place my bundle into the strainer over the pot, and then I'm going to cover it with foil tightly, and I'm going to leave it there for about a half hour. Uh, and then I'll check it and see if I'm pleased with the pattern result, if it's dark enough, if not, I can steam it a little longer. 
uh, but you don't want to put the fabric actually into the water. You see that I still have my gloves on uh, because this was dipped into the caustic solution and I don't want it to get on my hands. Um, the other thing is the rust is very dirty. You can see it's on my gloves and I don't want that to get on my hands either. It will stain your hands in addition to it being kind of dangerous. Another note I want to um, be sure to point out is that the cookware that I use for dyeing fabric, I do not use to cook in. I have separate cookware to cook with, and in fact, the um, pieces that I dye fabrics with, I actually keep in a separate part of the house, just because I don't want anyone to ever confuse the pieces and accidentally um, cook in something that I have made dyes with. And the reason for that is that not all dyes are safe for um, consumption, like this, for example, would be very bad for you. There's also even some natural dyes from uh, trees and plants that would be very harmful to you if you consumed them. And uh, they can actually leach into the metal. So even though you have cleaned them properly, just cooking in them after that is still dangerous to you. Okay, so I'll let that start to boil and once the steam starts rising, I'll cover this. Meanwhile, I will get another piece prepared. Okay, so I've got my bundles in the steamer. Um, you can hear the water's boiling underneath. I've got the one where I wrapped the metals in the cloth and this one is attached to a rusty chain and I didn't want to break it off so it, it can just sit there like that, it won't hurt anything. This is the one that I just bunched up into kind of a rosette shape and sat in the steamer as well. And then now I'm going to cover the top of it tightly with Reynolds foil, aluminum foil, and leave it there for about 30 minutes. Okay, so there's my pot all ready to go and we'll come back and check on so it. So my bucket, I'm not gonna keep the liquid stored in plastic. Um, I don't know that it won't eat through it. I put it in plastic temporarily because I needed something with a little bit wider of a mouth that I could dip pieces in and out of very easily. But um, when I'm not using the bucket, I store them in big mason jars that I have. Uh, or you could use some other glass container. I wouldn't use metal, obviously, because it will rust it, probably. Um, and I don't know about any other material, but mason jars work really well. Another interesting way to dye with rust is to soak your fabric in white vinegar and then wrap it around a piece of rusty metal and leave it in the sun for a few hours. As you can see, the rust did oxidize onto the fabric after we steamed it. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and add some additional detail to it, but I'm pretty happy with the results so far.